Welcome. So we have a quiet high-end PC with outstanding performance. But what now? For many, water cooling is the next step, but the difficulty and risk can deter potential builders. In this episode, we take an existing air-cooled build and convert it step-by-step step into a custom water-cooled build. So what is the effort required for water cooling and what benefits can be gained? Find out right now as we convert this build with CPU and GPU water blocks, a pump reservoir combo unit, radiator, fans, fittings, hard tubing, and coolant. This is the Vector Network and let's begin. The existing build is a Ryzen 7 5800X3D air-cooled with an Octua NH-U12A on a ROG Strix B558 motherboard with 32GB of DDR4 memory and paired with a ROG Strix RTX 4080 Super OC with the stock air cooler. Other CPU, motherboard, and GPU combos will follow a similar if not the same process. Once the CPU air cooler is removed, we can install a CPU water block. We use the Optimus Foundation AM4 water block cooled the 5800X 3D. This Optimus water block has been previously unboxed and used on this channel. Links in the description. So it has been disassembled and clean and is ready to be reassembled for installation. We'll start with the Optimus cast acrylic water block top, then place the aluminum bracket on top, followed by a black rubber O-ring. and another smaller black rubber O-ring. Next is the nickel plated copper cold plate, advertised as the flattest cold plate on the market, and four Phillips head screws securing the cold plate to the metal bracket. Flipping the water block over, we can secure the top to the bracket with four hex screws. Then drop in two Optimus plugs, and the block is ready for installation. The Optimus water block is assembled with metal screws into metal threads, which helps for reassembling the block over and over again. To the existing AM4 backplate, let's add four mounting posts, followed by applying Noctua NTH2 thermal paste to the 5800X3D. We can then drop the water block on top and secure it with four mounting thumb screws. Tighten in a crisscross pattern to apply pressure more evenly. And that's it. The CPU block is now installed. Next, let's grab our fittings. For this build, we are using hard tubing. For options, we have the Corsair Hydro X hardline fittings in silver, EKWB Torque hardline fittings in black nickel and satin titanium, and Optimus hardline fittings in satin silver. These are all 14 millimeter fittings for a medium size. The Optimus fitting was selected as it had the cleanest design and the color matches the CPU block bracket. It also has a noticeably thicker gasket. We'll also use EKWB 90 degree, 45 degree, and 14 millimeter offset adapter fittings and a drain port all in satin titanium. Let's drop these fittings into place. and then drop the motherboard into the Lee & Lee O11 Evo, followed by nine motherboard screws. Now we're ready for the GPU. To cool the video card, we have the Alpha Core Core GPU water block. This block is compatible with the 4080 Tough and Strix models, and is also compatible with the 4080 Tough and Strix Super variants. We previously unboxed and tested this Alpha Core Core block on this channel, link in the description. So it has been disassembled and cleaned and is ready to be reassembled for installation. The cold plate is chrome plated copper. The Alpha Cool 30 series cold plates were nickel plated. The chrome plating intended to be harder wearing and more stain resistant is a new feature introduced with the 40 series Alpha Cool ice block models. For the core line, Alpha Cool is retaining the chrome plating and the width of the cold plate has been increased to cover more of the PCB. The water block uses a chrome plated copper jet plate There's also an, an acrylic crossover block and we can drop that right on top, followed by the large black rubber O-ring. Mm -hmm. 
The acrylic top houses a clear rubber O-ring in the middle. Since RGB was not planned to be used in this build, the LED strip glued to the acrylic top was removed to reduce cable clutter. Next, we can drop the top onto the cold plate and secure it with 13 hex screws. Flipping the block over, there's a black acrylic piece to attach for the IO bracket. We'll use three hex screws. Next are the chrome plated brass threads located on both sides of the terminal. The black plastic pieces covering parts of the terminal and the last two remaining screws are not required for operation and were not salvaged. Let's drop a pair of black rubber O-rings onto one of the chrome plated threads. Then place that under the cold plate then another pair of O-rings. And then we can place the other thread right on top and secure it with two Phillips head screws. For now, let's drop in a pair of Optimus plugs for the front. And water cool plugs for the back. On this channel, we previously did a teardown of the ROG Strix RTX 4080 Super OC, link in the description. The stock IO bracket is removed by first removing five Phillips head screws. Then we can secure the Alpha Cool IO bracket with the same five screws. Since we are reusing this water block, the pre-cut stock thermal pads were discarded. So let's go ahead and cut new thermal pads to size to cover the memory and VRMs. These are all one millimeter thick thermal pads. Then we can apply the Noctua NTH2 thermal paste to the 4080 Super. And then place the PCB directly on top of the cold plate. Followed by five black foam spacers that have been previously used. The used foam spacers never sat well with me, so after fully installing the card, I decided to disassemble the card and replace the foam spacers with new plastic spacers. Followed by five spring-loaded Phillips head screws around the processor and one near the terminal. Two more Phillips head screws to secure the I.O. bracket. Backside thermal pads are salvageable from the previous installation. These are all three millimeter thick pads. Let's drop the back plate right on top of the PCB and secure it with six Phillips head screws. And there we go. Our GPU is ready to be installed into the case. We will install this vertically in our case to showcase the water block and its flow design. For mounting, we are using the Lian Li vertical mount kit with a Gen 4 riser cable. The GPU slots into the riser cable and secures to the mount with two Phillips head screws and the mount secures to the PC with five thumb screws. Let's drop in a pair of EKWB 90 degree adapters and Optimus 14 millimeter hardline compression fittings. Now we can install the riser cable into the motherboard and secure the mount to the case. The water cool heat killer 150mm reservoir tube and D5 pump combo unit is next. The heat killer D5 bottom is part of the modular heat killer tube series where each part can be interchanged separately. For example, we can add 150mm silver tube struts to match the build. The aluminum struts are required to be installed first with 4 hex screws. Here we're using the Xylem D5 pump with PWM control and say the power. First, let's drop in the black rubber O-ring and then the D5 pump, followed by the D5 holding ring and eight hex screws. For mounting to the case, we'll need the heat killer two basic mount and also the 120 millimeter fan adapter. Let's drop the fan adapters on top of the basic mount and secure it with four hex screws. Then we can slide the mounted adapters onto two struts of the reservoir. 
The heat killer tube is made of glass and is 150 millimeters for the medium size. And we are using the multi-port top with the acrylic inlet downpipe. We'll first install the inlet downpipe and then drop in the clear rubber O-ring and then the glass tube. And then one more clear rubber O-ring followed by the tube and multi-port top together secured with four hex screws. Now let's add an EKWB offset fitting to help align the run and an Optimus hardline fitting. And then an EKWB 90 degree adapter and drain port for convenience. And then another pair of EKWB 90 degree adapters and an Optimus hardline fitting. Now we can secure the reservoir pump combo to the case with four hex screws and washers. For cooling, we'll use the Hardware Labs Black Ice Nemesis 360 GTX Dual Core Extreme Radiator. This is a 120mm x 3 fan radiator with a thickness of 54mm. We will repurpose three of the six Noctua NF A12 x 25 Chromax Black case fans and use them as radiator fans. The fans are installed as intake and the three remaining fans remain as the exhaust. Next, drop the side fan bracket from the case onto the fan side and secure it with 12 radiator screws. Since the fans are 25 millimeters thick, the screws are 30 millimeters long. Bent fins can be a common cosmetic issue for radiators. The fins can be bent straight again by using a variety of tools with a thin edge. Now let's drop and slide the cooling unit into the O11D Evo due to clearance now we can install the EKWB 45 degree adapter and a pair of Optimus hardline fittings. Next, for hard tubing, we are using 14 millimeter acrylic tubes. Cutting and bending acrylic tubes requires additional tools and takes practice to improve and perfect. To sidestep the bending, we are using pre-bent 90 degree 14 millimeter acrylic tubes from Bits Power. After measuring the runs and cutting off large acrylic chunks with essentially a mini hacksaw to smooth out the jagged edges, typically a deburring tool is suggested. Instead, let's use a Primo Chill rigid finishing bit. This is for hardline acrylic 14 millimeter tubes. This bit can be attached to a screwdriver to smooth out the tube after cutting or for more power, a gyroscopic screwdriver can be used or for even more power, a power tool can be used. Cleanup is required. The result is a set of hardline tubes ready for installation. The runs were designed to only have a maximum of one bend. This tube is going into the inlet on the GPU block. We'll connect this tube run to the outlet on the reservoir. This tube is going into the inlet on the CPU block. We'll connect this run to the outlet of the GPU block. From here, we'll install an Aqua Computer High Flow 2 flow sensor to detect flow rate and also coolant temperature. Let's attach a pair of Optimus 14 millimeter hardline fittings to both sides. And then we can attach a tube to one side, which will be the inlet, and a tube to the other, which will be the outlet. Then let's do the outlet run from the CPU block to one of the ports on the radiator, which will serve as the inlet. This tube is going into the inlet of the reservoir. The offset fitting is used to help align the run since we're restricted to one bend per tube. We'll connect this final run to the outlet of the radiator. The fill is next. So let's connect the state of power for the pump and put a jumper on the main 24 pin cable. So the pump will run without also powering up the PC. For coolant, we're using distilled water this is water cooling. We'll also add Primo Chill's Liquid Utopia Biocide. Pre-mixed coolant is an alternative and is one way to achieve certain colors and opaqueness. Distilled water makes cleanup and maintenance more convenient for avid builders. Turn on the power supply to start the pump. There is always air trapped in the loop during the fill. The water will eventually displace the air and move it out of the loop. 
With the pump header unplugged, the pump will default to maximum speed. This can help move the air out of the loop faster. With the leak test done, let's turn off the PSU and connect the remaining cables. To control the loop, we'll use the Aqua Computer Quadro. From here, we'll plug in the internal USB cable, ambient temp sensor, coolant sensor, radiator fans, case fans, pump, flow sensor, and a Molex connector for power. Then plugging in the power cables, the water cooled build is ready to be fully powered on. In appearance, the CPU and the GPU have a much reduced footprint as most of the cooling solution has been moved to the back of the case where the radiator and fans reside. Rather than having metal fins and fans front and center, the CPU and GPU showcases a water flow path. Angled adapters are used to ensure the runs point in the right direction. Fans were put behind the radiator so the white fins would be visible. The reservoir pump combo unit could have also been attached to the radiator or mounted to the bottom of the case. Stay tuned as the testing is coming up right now. We'll start with the air-cooled build and then compare the results to the water-cooled build. In both cases, to obtain the results, 3D Mark Speedway stress test was run with the Lee & Lee O-Dynamic Evo case completely enclosed with ambient room temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. For testing, the Strix 4080 Super is in the default performance mode and the Noctua NH-U12A is cooling the 5800X3D using the default fan curve from the CPU fan header. Three Noctua fans are set up as exhaust and three as intake using the default chassis fan curve from the motherboard. Shown on screen are the GPU core and memory temperatures as well as frame rate when the GPU is at stock, overclocked, or undervolted. As stock, the GPU core and memory temperatures were 57 and 68 degrees Celsius, respectively. The Strix 4080 Super had a stable overclock after adding 1,600 megahertz to the memory, and temperatures for the core and memory increased 2 and 5 degrees Celsius, respectively. At this combined RPM level, the approximate and average noise was recorded to be between 31 and 35 decibels. For the water-cooled build, the Hardware Labs 54mm thick radiator is cooled by three Noctua 120mm fans at 50% speed set to intake, three case fans at 30% speed set to exhaust, and the D5 pump at 50% speed. Water-cooled, the core and memory temperatures dropped across the board in each scenario and the frame rate remained the same, as expected. As stock, the core and memory temperatures dropped 4 and 3 degrees Celsius, respectively, Undervolted, the core and memory temperature dropped 5 and 4 degrees Celsius, respectively. Further, at this RPM level, the decibel level was less than 30, as it could not be picked up by the reader. So we can further improve temperatures by simply increasing the speed on the fans, or leave them as is and enjoy the silence. Further from here, additional radiators or fans can be added to increase the cooling performance. Keep in mind, the CPU temperature averaged in the low 50s under both air and water. An Intel CPU with higher wattage would have been more of a challenge for this custom loop. The 5800X3D was used as it's been a popular CPU that's currently slotted in many builds as the final upgrade on the Zen 3 AM4 socket. So there we have it. Taking a rock solid air cooled build and converting it into a full custom loop can be an upgrade for builders looking for cooler components with lower noise levels. Water cooling also opens up more aesthetic options to stand out or to achieve a certain look. So what do you think? Air or water? And which build are you building next? Like the video by clicking the like button. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the Vector Network. Please click on the bell for notification when the next episode airs. Click on the links here for more videos like this, including video card and water cooling component teardowns, unboxings and thermal testing for water cooled PC builds. Thank you and I'll see you at the next episode.